Sunday. It is a new year. Church, I know you're at home, but I want to invite you to stand up if you are able. Let's worship our King Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands together.
shelter, I was an orphan. You called me a citizen to When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. It's when you call my name.
Come on, sing it out. And he is faithful, and he is glorious, and he is Jesus, and all my hope is in him. He is freedom, and he is healing right now. He is hope and joy, love and
Let's continue with the service. Happy Sunday, church. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Whether you're joining us from Orange County, Monrovia, or somewhere else in the world, we're so glad that you decided to worship with us. I wanna welcome anyone who happens to be joining us for the very first time. We're so glad that you came. We hope that you enjoy the worship, you enjoy the message, and even though you're watching online, I hope you feel right at home. Introduce yourself in the comment section so someone can say hello and check out our website, ifjfla.com, for more information about our church. In just a moment, we're gonna pray for the offering, but real quick, I wanna thank you so much for partnering with us in our mission to connect with God and make disciples. Everything that we did this year was made possible by your partnership, your ministry, and your generosity. So from the bottom of our hearts here at IFGF, Thank you so much, and we appreciate your partnership with us in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to remind you that there are three easy ways to give. You can give on your mobile device by texting IFGFLA Give to the number on the screen. You can give online at IFGFLA.com, or you can give by writing a check. Just write it out to IFGF and send it to the address on the screen. You can also scan the QR code, and that will take you directly to our giving page. Now, that said, let's go ahead and pray and prepare our hearts to give. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness this year. Lord, thank you for bringing us through another year full of highs and lows. Lord, mountains and valleys. God, through it all, you were faithful, you were gracious, you were with us. So God, we thank you for that. And today we want to give our best just as an act of worship and surrender. Lord, we want to give our best also to partner with you in what you're doing through our church and around the world. Lord, we pray that you would bless our offering and use it for your purposes, God. May you use our offering to help other people know Jesus. We love you, Lord. We give our best to you today. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Church, you may give. This Friday at 7.30 p.m., we're going to be having corporate prayer at the Monrovia campus. We'll be meeting inside the World Harvest House and food will be provided. So I want to encourage you to join us for the first prayer gathering of the year. It's a great way to start off 2023 and let's come together and seek the Lord as a community. So join us this Friday at Corporate Prayer. This Saturday, we're having our first Women of Worth meeting. This is our women's ministry. It's gonna be at the Monrovia campus in the World Harvest House at 8.30 a.m. This is a great opportunity to fellowship with other sisters in Christ. So I wanna encourage you to mark your calendar and come on out for some wonderful fellowship at WOW. We are so excited to announce that the West LA campus is finally relaunching on Sunday, January 22nd at 4.30 p.m. in Santa Monica. Now you may be wondering what you can do to help us prepare for this launch. First, be praying. We definitely need your prayer, and so be praying for the relaunch. Also, we can use your help. If you wanna volunteer, you wanna help with ushering, setup, teardown, talk to myself, talk to Pastor Steffi, or your campus pastor, we would love to have your help. And lastly, invite your friends and family, especially if you have people that you know out by the West who need to hear the gospel, invite them. We would love to have them come. So mark your calendar for this wonderful relaunch on January 22nd. Mark your calendar for Vision Sunday, which is gonna be on January 29th. This is when we take time to hear and receive the vision that God has for us this coming year. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. We're gonna share the prophetic theme for this year. We're gonna share some of our goals for our various ministries. And it's gonna be a very encouraging time, a time of direction, clarity. So come on out on January 29th for Vision Sunday in Monrovia and Orange County. Hope to see you there. Well, church, that's all the announcements for today. Make sure to follow us on social media so you never miss a thing. If you wanna get more information, you wanna to talk to a pastor, scan this QR code and fill out an online connect card and we will get in touch with you, either myself or Pastor Steffi. So if you have questions about baptism, salvation, becoming a member, anything at all, scan this QR code and we will be in touch. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service.
Happy New Year, IFJ family. Good morning. It is so good to be with you all this morning. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas season. Can you believe it that 2023 is right here, right now? It feels like 2022 was just like yesterday. I mean, it was yesterday, but I, what I was trying to say, January 1st, 2022 feels like it was just yesterday. But God is good. He was good in 2022. He's going to be good in 2023. Amen. He was faithful in 2022. He will be faithful in 2023. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Now, for 2023, the prophetic direction for our church, our movement IFGF is alive with character. Can you repeat it after me? Alive with character. Now, IFGF is a family of 3,000 churches in 50 countries in six continents. There are seven continents. The only continent that we do not have a church in is Antarctica. So if any of you would like to volunteer to be sent to Antarctica, talk to Pastor Denny, who is in charge of uh, church planting. But the problem is there is nobody in Antarctica. That's why we do not have any church in Antarctica. But if you happen to, to travel um, uh, uh, around the world, uh, visit us. Like if you're in Qatar, or if you're in India, or if you're in Pakistan, or if you're in Japan, or if you're in Australia, we have churches in those countries. We are a family of 3,000 churches around the world, and we are so excited to be a part of the big family. Also, as a family, something that we have been doing for many, many years is the beginning of every year, we together as one family around the globe, we do this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, I know I can hear your moaning and groaning. I can see your sad faces right now. I mean, the first message of 2023, and you're talking about suffering, but I would like you to hear me out. I would like to, don't, don't, sh don't, don't turn off the TV, don't tune me out. I would like you to listen with an open mind and an open heart and open ears. Don't multitask. I need you to sit down, take out your Bible, and take notes because we're going to do this together as one family. Can I hear a good amen? Hallelujah. A life with character. Repeat after me. A life with character character. I mean, God calls us to be conformed to the image of His Son. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. This year, we're going to talk about topics like sin, sanctification, sexual ethics, about how character affects our relationships, marriage, affect how we parent, affect our, how we interact with, with the people around us, how it affects our work, how to neighbor. Now, Christian character is modeled after God's character. So for us to say that we need to grow in character, that means we need to grow in God's character. In other words, godliness. Godliness. I want everybody to say godliness. Godliness. Now, the opposite of godliness is worldliness. Worldliness. Now, today the message is going to be a little bit more of a Bible study. I hope you don't mind. And we're going to look at two main passages, and I'm going to present a problem and a solution. So, uh, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come on, take out your Bible. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All right? We're going to start with verse 14. Now, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now we're going to continue, but it's chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, 
I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Amen. Would you please bow your head really quick and let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for 2022. We thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you the many ways you uh, have be, had been faithful to us in 2022, how you came to our rescue, how you pro- provided for us, how you protected us, how you healed us, how you restored us, how you did wonderful things in our lives. And God, as we are entering 2023, we believe that you are the same God. You, are the, you were the same God yesterday, you are the same today, and you will continue to remain the same tomorrow and forever. So this morning, as we dig deep into your word, we ask for your spirit to illuminate our hearts and to illuminate our minds, help us to hear from you, speak to us, O God, speak into our situation, reveal things to us, help us to be ready for 2023. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Men. Now, according to this passage, there are three types of people. Number one, the unspiritual person. And then number two, the spiritual person. And lastly, the worldly person. Number one, the unspiritual person, the spiritual person, and the worldly person. Now, human being it consists of three things, the th- three elements. The body, the soul, and the spirit. So God created you with your body. It's your physical tent. And also your soul. And your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then lastly, your spirit. Now, your spirit is is a part that is dark and dormant and deprived. And this is how we are born. We are born that way, that our spirit is dead. Our spirit it was dormant without, apart from Christ. And we are born that way, meaning that every inclination in our heart is sinful. That is our natural inclination, which is to be sinful. Now, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 says, And the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Everything, everything we think, everything we imagine are consistently and totally evil. Nobody taught us how to lie. Nobody taught me how to lie. Nobody taught me how to do evil things. I remember I had a nanny. I was like maybe about four or five. For no reason, I slapped her on her back. Like really, I hit her on her back. No reason. She didn't do anything wrong. I, I I I just found it to be like funny. And she was like in pain and she cried and I was laughing. I didn't see anybody teaching me how to do it. I just came up with it. I also, I just remembered, I also, I I just found, I just discovered the joy of playing with scissors. I cut her long hair, like a couple, you know, pieces. So, I mean, like me trying to play, you know, a a hairstylist. And then, of course, it was, it was crazy. So, I cut her hair and she was so furious. Nobody taught me how to do any of that. I was about four or five years old. The mind, everything we think, everything we imagine are consistently and totally evil. Now, Mark chapter 7, verses 20 to 23, and he went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of the person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, 
murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evil comes from the inside and defile a person. I don't know if you look at the list, how many of them that you struggle with? I struggle with some of them. I mean, arrogance for sure. I mean, I might not come across as cocky or arrogance like, uh, like externally, but definitely in my heart. You know, I, I demonstrate arrogance many times. Um, sexual thoughts, you know. I mean, I remember a few years ago, uh, watching a, a, an interview, Pastor Rick Warren was interviewed by CNN, and it was about something, an issue, um, uh, just like uh, le- legislation was just uh, uh, approved, just passed uh, the, the both, the, both the, the House and the Senate, and then he was asked his opinion about it, and then he, he said this, you know, every time I see a beautiful woman, I want to make love to her. And I was like, Wow. That is so honest. That is so vulnerable. And if I want to be honest, I, you know, I mean, I totally uh, uh, agree with him. Like, I think every man struggles with sexual thoughts, uh, adultery, uh, greed, um, malice, envy. I struggle with envy and jealousy. Now, from time to time, as I, sh- I scroll through my social media feed, I would be seeing other people's lives or other pastors' churches, and I start envying them. So out of a person's heart, out of my heart, evil thoughts come. Out of your heart, evil thoughts come. The heart and the mind, they're corrupted. It's our sinful inclination. We are born that way. And in James chapter 1, verses 13 and 15, or through 15, says... When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Wow, what a powerful Verses. Now, there's this quote that I really like from Thomas Kramer. Thomas Kramer. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury, a leader in the English Reformation. And this is what he wrote When the heart loves, the will chooses, and the mind justifies. Let me repeat that part one more time. When the heart loves, The will chooses, the mind justifies. Now, the mind does not direct the will. The mind is actually captive to what the will wants. The will itself, in turn, is captive to what the heart wants. Wow. So, the heart trust, the emotions desire, the mind justifies, And the will carries it out. Let me repeat it one more time. The heart trusts, the emotions desires, the mind justifies, and the will carries it out. Jeremiah chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I mean, the Bible says it. Our heart is deceitful. Our heart is desperately sick. Meanwhile, our, we live in a culture that, teach us, that teaches us to follow your heart. You know, the entertainment, the music, the movies that we love teach us to follow your heart, to follow your heart. Disney, Disney movies. I mean, I love them fairy tales, but that's what they are fairy tales. So, and they teach us to follow our hearts. Meanwhile, the Bible says, your heart is deceitful, desperately sick. Your heart 
In other words, your heart is unreliable. Your heart is confused. Your heart is flaky, right? If you follow your flaky heart, it will cause you to have an achy, breaky heart. If you follow your flaky heart, you will have an achy, breaky heart. Now, I'm not saying that you ignore your heart, that you ignore your emotions, because God made us to feel. We do have emotions, but I want to encourage you that, you know, your emotions are not your God. Your feelings are not your God. They are made by God for you to experience, to feel. So what do we do? With our emotions, with our feelings, what do we do with our hearts? Give your hearts to God. Give your hearts to God. One of my favorite Christmas tunes would be, Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Man, I mean, I love that song. It is so catchy. It is just so fun. It's, the melody is so good, but the lyrics are pretty dumb. I mean, I'm sorry, George Michael, but uh, I mean, I love the song. I love the tune, but I mean, just because you gave it to the wrong person this year and you're going to give it to somebody else next year, there's no guarantee that that person is not going to break your heart. It's not, there's no guarantee that you're not going to have an achy, breaky heart. Unless that person is Jesus. If that someone special is Jesus, you are not going to have an achy, breaky heart. I mean, the cure to the flaky heart of yours to prevent you from having, experiencing an achy, breaky heart, bring it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. I mean, Jesus said, you must be born again, otherwise you can't see the kingdom of God. He was having this conversation with a, with a Pharisee named Nicodemus, and he got confused. What do you mean? I mean, being born again. I mean, physically? Does mean I got to go back to my mom's womb? How is that even possible? And Jesus was like, you don't understand this thing? I mean, you're a Pharisee. You should know these things. But what Jesus meant was to be born again spiritually. You need to be born of water and spirit. Because John chapter 3 verse 6 says this, Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So that's why going back to the three types of people, three types of person, the unspiritual person, the person without the Spirit does not accept things that come from the Spirit of God, but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the Spirit. A person without the Spirit, it's called psychikos. Psychikos, you're merely driven by your body. You're just driven by your soul, by your emotions, by your mind, by your will, your desires, your dreams, your decision-making process, everything is driven by your body and by your soul. And your spirit person, your spirit man, does not involve in the process. Now, for those who are not yet in Christ, that spirit part is dark, is dead, is dormant, and is deprived. So people who are critical of Christianity are always going to be like that until they experience it themselves. Until they have that aha moment, until they have that light, light, bulb, light bulb come comes on, that, that aha moment. So unspiritual person, they cannot discern things of God because they are spiritual. Meanwhile, the other type, the second type is the spiritual person, the spiritual person, which is the person with the spirit, makes judgments about all things. But such a person is not subject to merely human judgments, for who has known the mind of the Lord as, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. How many of you are in Christ? How many of you are in Christ? If you are in Christ, you should have the mind of Christ. Person with the Spirit is a spiritual person, and the Greek word is pneumatikos. 
pneumatikos. You know, that spirit, we were born that way. The spirit was dead before Christ. But when we made that decision to welcome Jesus into your life, into your heart, at that moment, your spirit is being made alive. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 says, we were dead in our transgressions and sin, right? And then, but God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ Jesus. Now, I mean, physically, we have been alive. We have been, you know, breathing and, and functioning. Our lungs have been breathing air in and out. Our, our hearts have been beating. But spiritually, we were dead. Our spirit man, our spirit person was dead before Christ. That's why we could not discern with, with, with the spirit judgment. We could only merely judge things from human judgments. So that's why in the beginning of the year, I'm talking about this because, I mean, usually in the beginning of the year, we come up with resolutions. And usually by April, everybody has broken every New Year resolution they have made, right? I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lead you with a list of 10 things or 10 resolutions that you should make this year. I just want you to commit to one thing, to work into your spiritual being because the best way to change your life is to change your life spiritually because when your spirit person, your spirit man uh, begins to, to begin to change, it will affect the other parts, other aspects of your life. Can I hear a good amen? So that the spirit person, the spiritual person is not limited to human judgments, but we have access to God's Spirit, which means we have access to the mind of Jesus. Now, our spirit, it was dead, but made us alive in Christ. So our spirit right now is 100% in alignment with God and His Spirit. That's why we do have access to the mind of Christ and the Spirit makes judgment about all things. He knows what you need to do in regards to different issues in your life, in your marriage, in your family, dealing with your kids, dealing with your aging parents, dealing with health issues, dealing with your finances, dealing with your work and business, dealing with your relationships, because the Spirit makes judgment about all things. So the only New Year resolution that I would like all of us together collectively as one body, as one family, is how much more spiritual can I become? I would like all of us to work our, into our, our, work our spiritual being, our spiritual person. Now, I don't mean spiritual in, a, in ways that are obnoxious or arrogant or, you know, about being religious or being dogmatic or demonstrating fake piety. I, I don't mean it that way. I mean working on your spiritual person because your spiritual will impact the physical, the emotional, the, and other parts of the life. Can I hear a good amen? So, if you're not a Christian, you're not yet in Christ, today is a great day for you to begin that journey to receive Christ, to accept Him into your life, not only as your Savior, but also as your Lord. I mean, if you grew up in church and right now you are far from God, you have gone astray, it is a good day for you to recommit your life to Jesus. God is giving you an opportunity to start with a, a new beginning, with a fresh start, with a blank page. Amen. For some of you this year, you might need to make a decision to get water baptized. You've been delaying that decision for a while. For some of you, maybe to connect yourself into a group or into a surf team. For some of you, maybe just to commit to have a special time with the Lord every single day in prayer, in reading His Word, in, in singing praises. Amen. So there's the unspiritual person. There is the spiritual person. And then number three, there's the worldly person. The worldly person. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, 
I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. Worldly here means carnal. I mean, notice it says brothers and sisters, meaning that Paul, Apostle Paul, was addressing Christians, brothers and sisters. So it is possible for Christians to be carnal, to be worldly. And he says, I can't address you as spiritual people, but as worldly people. You should be people who live by the Spirit, but yet you are not. Carnal, you're carnal Christians. Carnal, I mean, same word, you know, root word with carne. You know, carne asada or uh, chili con carne. Man, are we supposed to be fasting or feasting? I mean, this is not helpful, you know. Carnal, Christians with some flesh and worldliness. Because if the spirit man is not strong enough, right, even though those who are in Christ do have the spirit of God, do have access to uh, the mind of God, so we are to work on our spirit man, our spirit person. Now verse 2, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Worldly here, mere infant in Christ. In Christ. Again, talking about Christians. They're Christians, but they're still babies. Uh, their experience was on the, like the more, more on a baby level, right? They could not experience the best in life that God has for them. You remember, uh, Zach, as a kid, he could not enjoy a lot of things. Like we tried to, hey, Zach, you want to try this? You want to try that? You want to try, you know, this food? You want to try that food? No, I mean, like most of the time he would say no. But as he grew older, uh, Ellen and I, we are... Um, we really enjoy seeing him expanding his palate. Like, he used to not like these things, but he likes steak now. Steaks? He likes sushi. California rolls are his favorite. He likes curry. All kind of curry. Indian, Japanese, Malaysian, Thai. He likes curry now. He likes satay. Like, he used to not like those things. So, similarly, God is spirit. And spiritual things can only be enjoyed with your spirit person. That's why I would like to start the year by encouraging you to work on your spirit man, your spirit person. Because worldly Christians, they're baby Christians. And an example of the attitude of baby Christians is they are, you know, they're jealous. They like to quarrel. They like to fight. And in doing, doing so, they act like mere humans. Because we are not just mere humans. We are humans who have been filled with the Spirit of God who have the mind of Christ. If you agree with me, can I hear a good amen? Amen. Now turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. There is a war going inside of you. There is a war going on inside of me. Because between the body and the soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, body, soul, and your spirit, there is a war because each one of them would like to be in charge of you. I mean, I'm, of you. And of me, body, soul, spirit, each one of them would like to be in charge of you and I. Now, which one is in charge? Which one is in charge between the body, the soul, and the spirit? The answer is whoever is stronger. Between the body, the soul, and the spirit, whoever is stronger is going to be in charge. Now, who is stronger? Or what causes one to be stronger? Now, whichever one Whichever one who gets fed the most. Whoever you feed the most, 
the body, the soul, or the spirit, that one is going to get stronger and stronger. If you want the body to be in charge, whatever the body wants, the body gets. The body can never, you know, accept no for an answer. If you want your soul to be in charge, your emotions, your will, your mind, whatever your heart desires, you know, we've heard stories. They're not just in movies how there are individuals who abandoned their marriage to pursue an old flame from high school or from college because, of, because they decided to follow their hearts, they follow their emotions, body, soul, you know. Remember, whatever the heart loves, the will choose, and the mind justifies. It seems like, yeah, and this is the right thing to do because it begins with the heart. It begins with the emotions and feelings. You know, if you keep feeding sinful things to the body, whatever the body wants or whatever the heart desires, it will keep you from doing the things that you want to do. Now, if you want your spirit person to be strong, you must feed yourself with spiritual things. Because when the spirit person or the spirit man is strong, uh, it will change and it will affect the other parts. So, I'm going to take us to another passage, and I'm going to present the same problem, but this time around with the solution. Are you still with me? So turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 17. The book of Matthew chapter 17. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into fire or into the water, and I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. So this person's son, either he, 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 he got burned or he drowned himself. And the disciples, I mean, from this uh, statement, the disciples had ex the experience to heal people, and people got healed. But in this particular case, the boy was not healed, right? It's working in some situations, but not in that particular situation. So let's continue verse 17. You, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And in verse 18, Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. I want you to underline two words here, unbelieving and perverse. Unbelieving and perverse. I mean, the disciples have had the experience of healing some people, but not some others. Why is it not working all the time? Why well, is it only working on some and not the others? You know, sometimes... You know, we are free from a lot of things, but there's some free that still keep us in bondage. We have experienced victories in many areas, but in, not in all areas. We still struggle in some areas. We have overcome a lot of areas, but we just have few hang-ups that just would not go away. Two words that I'd like us to underline, unbelieving, the first one, unbelieving, Unbelieving is somebody who is not connected to God. Unbelieving is somebody who is not connected to God. And Jesus was like, I mean, how long shall I be with you, this unbelieving and perverse generation? So one group is a group of people who struggle with unbelieving. These are people who are not connected to God. These are people that is according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is unspiritual. The unspiritual people. You got faith. Right? And, but the problem is you're not connected to God enough. You know, if you only work on your spiritual man, your spiritual person, you know, really be intentional about spending time with the Lord every single day in prayer, in reading the Word of God, your faith will grow. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Unbelieving people. And then secondly, the second group that Jesus was, was referring to, perverse, unbelieving and perverse. Now, this group are the people who are too connected to the world. 
They are too connected to the world. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that we read earlier, these people who are worldly, the worldly people, the problem is two things. These people, they're not connected and they're too connected. They're not connected as they should be with God. And they're con too connected to the world where they should not be. Now, this combination causes some victories in some areas, but you have not experienced victory in some other areas. Many times you rarely can say no to sinful habits or habits that are destructive, habits that are not edifying. Some habits, they might not necessarily be sinful, but... They're not edifying. They're destructive. Maybe you're addicted to social media. Maybe you're addicted to your phone. Maybe you're addicted to video games. Maybe you're addicted to food. Maybe you run to food for comfort. Maybe you're addicted to some, some, some uh, substances, even though they may be legal. So we have a problem here, the problem with unbelieving and perversion. Now, Here's the solution, uh, verse 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Move from here and there and it will move. Move. Nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind of prayer does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Maybe you say that, you know, I've gone too far. You don't know what I've done. You don't know the darkest parts in my heart. There's nothing that I can do. But this is an encouragement that I would like all of you to hear. Nothing is impossible for God and nothing is impossible for you. So I want to say, do not give up. Tell somebody, don't give up. Don't give up. When we struggle with unbelief, we function outside of the realm of faith. We rely on the non-spiritual aspects or elements in our lives. We make decisions. We manage our desires using our own strength, using our own human judgments. We function, we act, we behave, we speak, just relying on the non-spiritual elements in our life. But yet, what is interesting, the solution that Jesus gave is prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, right? Number one, prayer. Why prayer? Uh, the first group was the group of people who struggle with unbelieving, and which means they're not connected to God. Now, this is what prayer does. Prayer connects us to God. Prayer connects us to God as you increase your time spent in prayer, you will notice that your faith is going to start to grow. It's going to start to increase. It's going to start to rise. And that's why, you know, when Jesus was uh, praying in the garden, he invited three of his disciples, Peter, John, and um, James. And then, but then he found them asleep. And then he was like, pray and be on guard because the spirit is willing, but the body, the flesh is weak. So pray. If unbelieving is the issue, pray. Because when we pray, prayer connects us to God. So what do we do? How do we pray? Now, I like this acronym, ACTS. ACTS, A-C-T-S. A-C-T-S. It stands for Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Acts. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration. Let's start our prayer with praising God, praising Him for who He is, for what He's done, 
for His character, for He is good, His love, His light, His mercy endures forever, His grace is amazing, that His love is everlasting. Praise Him. Start your prayer with adoration. And then the second thing that uh, we, we need to, to do, confession. Confess. If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just. He will cleanse you. He will forgive you, and He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So adoration, confession. We need to ask. Ask for forgiveness. Now, you know, of course, there's so many things that we did. I mean, when you think to do something evil, or if you have, you know, uh, uh, thoughts that are sinful, that's already a sin. And how many thoughts we have in a day. And we might not be able to remember every single thing that we did or we thought of or we, we, we spoke of. You know, but whenever the Holy Spirit reminds you of something that you did, just be quickly to, oh my goodness, I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me and help me. Please forgive me and help me. So adoration, confession, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You know, try to remember the many things that you have been blessed with. I mean, like things like the gift of life, the fact that you are still alive, your heart beats, your lungs breathes, and, you know, your body functions appropriately. I mean, as you get older, you appreciate, you be, you, you're you going to start to appreciate the fact that your body functions well because parts of my body have, you know, become, you know, like a, a, a painful to move, right? Every time, you know, I go up and down the stairs, you know, I'm, a, I'm afraid because, you know, my knee is going to give me some pain every time I go up and down the stairs, you know. So I appreciate the, the gift of health, the gift of life, you know, so there are always so many things that you can be grateful for. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then supplication. You can ask for your needs. Ask for the needs of, of your loved ones, your spouses, your kids, uh, your fa uh, and family members. You know, pray for people who are over you, your bosses, your managers, people who are under you, people that you supervise, people you manage, and people from around you, you know, your, your peers, your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends. You know, you can pray alone, uh, with, uh, with, 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 you know, spend your time with Jesus, pray with your family, pray with your spouse, pray with your kids, you know, husbands, fathers, you are the priest of the house. If you're a single mom or single dad, pray with your kids, pray with your care group. Pray with your serving team, your ministry team. Pray with your friends. If you're dating, pray with your boyfriend or, or your girlfriend. You know, ask God to help you that in, in, in the way you pursue dating, that you, that you shall pursue purity and purpose. That in pursuing dating, you, you need to learn to build spiritual intimacy. Amen. Amen. So, pray. Prayer helps us to connect with God, because if the problem is, the struggle is with unbelieving, prayer helps us to connect with God. And then the second issue is uh, perversion, right? Because you are to, uh, those who struggle with perversion, they're too connected to the world. Now, that's why this is what we're going to do beginning tomorrow and for the next 21 days, fasting. Fasting. Because fasting dis disconnects us from the world. Fasting disconnects us from the world. Man, Pastor Steph, fasting, the first message of the year, you're talking about suffering. I mean, God doesn't want you to suffer. He wants you to be free. Fasting gives us this practice. Basically, we're telling our bodies, hey, I'm not going to be controlled by you, body, I'm not going to be controlled by what you want. Like, you know, what the body wants, the body gets. You know, what the heart wants, the heart desires, the, the heart gets. I mean, that means we are being controlled by our bodies. We are being controlled by our emotions. I mean, do you know what the definition of addiction is? Addiction is doing something that you don't want to do. Or not doing something that you should do or you want to do. 
right? I wish I can change, but I can't. So fasting helps us to regulate uh, our bodies, to tell our bodies, yes, I know, I know, I know you're supposed to eat at this time, but because I want to connect with God and want to disconnect from the world, body, you're not going to get food, you know, in, in regular hours. So the, in, uh, in a regular schedule. So you're going to have to wait until, um, you know, I break my fast. Or, you know, body, you're not going to get the food that you want because I'm not eating meat. I'm not eating sweets. I'm not eating carbs. I'm not eating all those good food. I, I just eat just to fuel my body in order for my body to be able to function for the next 21 days. I know you don't like it, body, but you just have to follow my spirit, because I'm putting the spirit in charge as it should be. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Amen. So the struggle with unbelief, the struggle with perversion, prayer connects us with God. Fasting disconnects us from the world. So that's why I'm calling IFJF LA. Come on, as one family, as a community, collectively, let's do this Together, can I hear a good amen? For 21 days, only 21 days, we together, we dedicate the first 21 days of 2023 to the Lord. Amen? I mean, the same principle as tithing, first fruit. We set aside 10% of our income, which is actually from the Lord, as, a, as an acknowledgement. God, we would not be able to have this work or this income without your blessing, without you. So we set aside 10% of our salary, of our income, of our revenue for you. The same thing, we're setting aside 21 days, the first 21 days in 2023 for prayer and fasting to connect with you, God. I'm telling, I'm saying no. We're saying no to our bodies, to our emotions, that you're not going to get what you want, but we are going to let the spirit person inside of us to be in charge. From January 2nd till January 22nd, we're going to do this together. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. I'm almost done. These are some practical steps that I'd like you to do. Number one, determine your objective. Determine your objective. What is your objective uh, uh, doing during these 21 days of prayer and fasting. I mean, the book of James says, you don't have because you don't ask. So a couple of suggestions that I would like to make for all of us. What are a good uh, objective for this prayer and fasting? Number one, declaring your dependence on God. Declaring your dependence on God. You know, you are putting, setting aside this time, these 21 days uh, uh, to, as a priority. Just like when, when we tithe, it's not so much about the amount as it is about the priority. Now, the amount is important, but what we are trying to tell God with our tithing and giving is that, God, we, we make you a priority because that's, where, that's your rightful place. The same thing, we're setting aside these 21 days for you to speak, for you to move, for you to show us, for you to give us direction, for you to help us plan for the rest of the year. In doing so, we are declaring our dependence on God. If there's anything that we need to ask for forgiveness for, that's the second thing. Declaring your independence on God, your dependence on God, asking for forgiveness. The Bible says, if my people would humble themselves and pray, I will heal I will forgive them and I will heal their land. And there's so much division in the country. There's so many polarization. But if my people, that's you, that's me, would humble ourselves and pray and ask for forgiveness, what are areas in our lives that we struggle with uh, that we, are, we have not repented just yet and we need to ask His forgiveness? And then, we want to focus on the spiritual, declaring our dependence on God, asking for forgiveness. We want to focus on the spiritual, right? I mean, man, these past one month beginning Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas, 
I've been indulging so much with food and 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 cakes and desserts and carbs and meats and 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 I, I gain at least five pounds, maybe even eight pounds, right? I mean, it's a good moment, a good time for us to focus on the spiritual. You know, if you have any addiction. It doesn't have to be, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's porn, maybe it's sex, maybe it's substances, legal or illegal. Maybe it's food. Maybe uh, you're addicted to shopping or spending. Maybe you're addicted to social media. Maybe you're addicted to your phone. I, I, I think I'm addicted to my phone. I need to do something about it. I'm addicted to social media. Like I'm antsy if I don't have my phone with me. I need to focus on the spiritual in this fasting and to be set free from certain addictions. Another thing that, we, 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 that, that can be our objective in this prayer and fasting season, welcoming the presence of God in your lives. Welcoming the presence of God in your life, declaring dependence on God, asking for forgiveness, focusing on the spiritual, welcoming the presence of God in your life. And then lastly, believing God for answers to specific needs. Some of you, have been praying for a loved one to receive Christ and believe that this year that's going to happen. That person is going to come to a point of surrender. He or she will surrender his or her life completely to Jesus. Some of you have been praying for a breakthrough financially. Some of you have been praying for a breakthrough in your career or in your business or in your marriage, believing that God's answers for those specific needs are going to be fulfilled. What is your objective? So determine your objective. Number two, decide what you will do. Decide what you will do uh, in this uh, fasting season. I mean, your body will say no, but we want to put the spirit in charge, and we want to put the flesh person to subject. We are not going to be enslaved by it, okay? So I'm going to share with you four fasting options. Number one, you can do a complete fast. So water and juice, no food. Maybe that's for, you know, somebody who is already advanced, you know. Definitely you need to consult your, daughter, your doctor, not your daughter, your doctor. Uh, maybe if this is your first time, it's too much for you. A complete fast. Uh, water and juice, no food, only for those who are ready and you need to consult with your doctor. Uh, number two, you can do selective fast, also known as Daniel fast. So you only uh, eat select food. Uh, usually, you know, like, like Daniel in the Bible, uh, he decided not to eat meat. So selective fast, usually, you know, people can opt from not eating meat, not eating sweets, not eating carbs, you know. Um, you know you, uh, yeah, so eating veggies, uh, fish, uh, uh, grains. Uh, so selective fast, complete fast, selective fast, partial fast. You just eat all the food, but not all the time. Like you can skip a meal, maybe skip a breakfast, or maybe skip a lunch, or skip a, a, a dinner. Or maybe you can skip two meals, maybe eat, uh, skip a breakfast and a lunch, and then break it at dinner time. So partial fast. Lastly, uh, what, um, I, what you probably often refer as social media fast, I think I want to expand it more than just social media. Uh, I would say a soul fast. So for those who are not ready for uh, fasting that uh, involves your physical body because of medical, uh, medical, because of medical conditions um, and fasting is not an option, I would like to uh, encourage you to do a soul fast. What would it look like if you don't do social media for 21 days? Or maybe don't watch Netflix for 21 days? Or maybe, uh, you know, increase your spiritual consumption, reading more uh, books that would grow your faith or listening to podcasts or uh, just read uh, the Bible more so that your faith shall grow. Uh, limit the consumption of entertainment. So go to our website for more info. You can either do a complete fast, a partial fast, a selective fast, or a soul fast. But regardless of which fast that you're going to choose, I would like to invite, encourage, exhort, implore every single one of you to join this prayer and fast thing. Amen? Amen. Can I hear a good amen? Now, number three, so determine your objective, decide what, will, what you will do, 
Number three, this is what I want you to do. Expect results. Expect results. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 8 through 9. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear, and your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer, and you will cry for help, and He will say, Here am I. So in this fasting, maybe some of you, uh, you, 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 you need healing. Maybe healing for your phys- physical body. Maybe you need healing in your marriage. Maybe you need healing in any relationship within your family. Maybe with one of your children. Maybe with a parent. Maybe with a sibling. Maybe with you know, a, a friend or somebody who you used to be close with. And you need healing. So that is one of the things that you can ask in this season. Healing. Secondly, righteousness, holiness. Ask God for a new level of, 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 of new level of walk with God uh, in which uh, you shut out carnality and then you work on your spiritual person, your spiritual man, that you uh, learn to develop habits, spiritual disciplines that would help you grow in your journey with the Lord. Healing, holiness, and lastly, health. Whatever it is that you need, maybe you need some help in the area of finances, maybe in the area of health, maybe in your school, in your career, in your business. So healing, holiness, and help, any of these areas. If you have anything specific that you would like me to to journey with you, to pray with you, I mean, you can text me or you can fill out a connect card and share with us. I mean, however much you feel comfortable, you don't have to reveal all the details, you can even just say, hey, Steph, please help me for healing. And you don't have to reveal anything else. Hey, Steph, uh, would you please uh, pray for me in this area of holiness and righteousness? I want to grow spiritually. Or maybe, Steph, I need help in this particular area. You don't have to reveal anything, just any of these three areas, healing, holiness, and help. And for the next 21 days, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to mention you by name. I'm going to mention you by name, all right? Text me or fill out a connect card because I want all of us at the end of this 21-day journey, we all are going to experience a, 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 a higher level of, of uh, spiritual awareness, like spiritual temperature, that spiritual experience. We're going to grow closer to God, that we're, gonna, uh, we're not going to struggle with unbelieving or perversion, but we're going to be diligent in, in prayer so that we can uh, be more connected with God. And we're going to practice fasting because we want to put our spirit person in charge, not the body, not the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions. They're not in charge. We want to put the spirit the spirit person in us who is 100% pure, 100% in agreement and in alignment with the Spirit of God to be in charge. And it's going to start tomorrow. 21 days. I know you can do it. We all can do it together. Amen. Amen. We're going to increase um, and be more intentional about our prayer time, our Bible reading time, because we want to grow our faith together. We want to grow spiritually together. Can I hear a good amen? Amen, amen, amen. So let's close in prayer, and I would like you to join me in agreement that this is what we are going to do, 21 days of prayer and fasting, because we believe that God is going to do mighty things in these next 21 days. Amen. Uh, Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so just thankful for this time that we we're able to hear from your word so many passages and verses that we just heard, we just read. Uh, But God, I mean, we believe that your word is spirit. Your word is alive. And even as we're done with this service, as this person stops preaching, uh, the spirit of God is alive. And he lives in us. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask for you to continue to speak. And I, I would like to ask you, Holy Spirit, to be in 
every person's journey for the next 21 days, a journey of season uh, of, of prayer and fasting in the season of prayer and fasting. And I ask Holy Spirit for you to um, just help us grow in faith. Help us grow and be more connected, more in tune with our spiritual man, our spiritual person. That together we learn to put the spirit person in charge, not the body, not the soul, the emotions, the will, and the mind, but the spirit. Because our spirit has been made alive in Christ. And our spirit is in alignment 100% with what your spirit wants. So help us in this journey. Give us the strength. Help us not to get sick or weak physically, emotionally. But help us. Give us the wisdom as we decide as to which type of fast that we're going to pursue. And help us to really make up our minds. Help us to commit. Help us with the objectives. And help us to have expectations. Have, have, help us to expect results. Because nothing is impossible for you. You are the one that's going to make it happen. So help us to do it as one family. Help fathers, husbands to do it with their uh, families. Help uh, every care group to do it together. To walk together. Every ministry, surf team to do it together. Lord, help us to increase our prayer time, our Bible, meditating, our reading time. God, help us to be more intentional about uh, getting connected with you and to disconnect with the world. Help us, O oh God, to commit. Help us to commit. And at the end of this 21 days, we all are going to celebrate together. We are going to uh, celebrate victories. We're going to uh, hear testimonies and breakthroughs at the end of these 21 days and for the rest of the year, oh God. Lord, we, don't know, we do not know what's going to happen, but our trust is in you. As you have been faithful, you will continue to be faithful. And we, we just believe it. We just trust that you are everything to us. Thank you, God. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen. So next week, we're going to be back here in person, okay? So, would really love to, uh, to see you. The first in-person service uh, in uh, both campuses, OC and Monrovia. And, you know, on the 22nd, we are going to relaunch West LA campus. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. Would you please lift up your hands and lift up your countenance and receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine His face upon you and give you his favor. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So receive the blessing of the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which is in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Happy Sunday. Happy New Year.